हेलो एवरीवन टुडे वी विल कवर अ टॉपिक ऑन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ ड्रग्स पार्ट वन सो बिफोर वी नो व्हाट इज डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन वी नीड टू बी फैमिलियर विद द टर्म डिस्पोजिशन डिस्पोजिशन इज अ प्रोसेस दैट टेंस टू लोअर द प्लाज्मा कंसंट्रेशन इन द ब्लड ओवरऑल इट इज अ सम ऑफ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एंड एलिमिनेशन सो डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इन्वॉल्व इ रिवर्सिबल ट्रांसफर ऑफ ड्रग्स बिटवीन कंपार्टमेंट्स Uh, for those who don't know what is compartment it basically means body fluid system for example first compartment is mostly the central compartment okay which involves plasma and tissues where the distribution of drugs take place while second compartment is usually the peripheral compartment which consists of tissues where the distribution of drug is comparatively slower further the second one is elimination which is irreversible loss of drug from the body irreversible means uh, whatever chemical reaction occurs or whatever process takes place it cannot return back to its original or from where it began okay so once in elimination once a drug or uh, it's lost it cannot be obtained back so further it is divided into two processes first is bio transformation and second one is excretion so distribution as i told before is defined as the reversible transfer of drug between one compartment to another so the first compartment is usually always the blood or the plasma while the other compartment is extra cellular fluid and other body tissues in other words you can also say that uh, distribution is a reversible transfer of drugs between the blood and the extracellular fluids and tissue distribution is a passive process there are two types of process processes in the body one is active and one is passive process in passive process the driving force is the concentration gradient between the blood and the extravascular fluids and tissue so uh, the steps involved in drug distributions are first there is a formation first formation of free or unbound drug okay so a drug which is bound to protein okay it, uh, that can be a form of, that is a form of uh, bound drug so once it detaches itself from the protein it becomes a free or an unbound drug so it penetrates from blood or capillary wall to interstitial or extracellular fluids okay so one after its second step is the formation of drug from the extracellular fluid to the intracellular fluid for which it has to cross the membrane of the tissue cells so here the rate determining step is the rate of perfusion to the extravascular tissue and second is the permeability of the drug for those who are still confused on what exactly permeation means it is the ease of molecules across the biological membrane or ease with which the ions or molecules pass through the pore of the channel while perfusion it is the passage of blood or other fluids through the blood vessels organ or tissue next is the factors affecting the distribution of drugs the first factor is the tissue permeability of the drug okay how permeable is the dr- drug through various tissues which are present in the body so it depends on physiochemical properties of the drugs like molecule size pka and o by w partition coefficient o by w stands for oil by water so and second is physiological barriers to the diffusion of drugs second is organ tissue size and perfusion rate third is binding of the drug to the tissue components which is further subdivided into first is the blood components and second is binding of the drug to extravascular tissue proteins and fourth factor is uh, is subdivided into age pregnancy obesity diet disease state and drug interaction moving to the next topic is tissue permeability of drugs 
The rate determining steps involved are the rate of drug formation and the rate of blood perfusion. If a blood flow to the entire tissues were rapid and uniform, difference in degree of distribution between the tissues will be indicative of the difference in the tissue permeability and process will be tissue formation rate limited. Tissue permeability depends on physiochemical property of the drug and physiological barrier. Physiochemical property of the drug includes molecular size, degree of ionization, partition coefficient and stereochemical nature of the drug. The partition coefficient here is the extent to which the drug separates in the two phases. The phase is mostly immiscible that includes oil and water and degree of ionization means to what extent the drug is ionized within the body. So moving to the first that is molecular weight, almost all drugs less than whose molecular weight is less than 500 to 600 daltons cross the capillary membrane into the extracellular fluid. Penetration of the drugs from the extracellular fluid to the cell depends on the molecular size, ionization constant and lipophilicity of the drug. Only small water soluble molecules and ion size less than 15 daltons enter the cell through aqueous filled channels. The next is degree of ionization and partition coefficient. These two are important factors to determine the tissue permeability of the drug. As you all know, most of the drugs are either weak acids or weak bases. The degree of ionization at plasma or extracellular fluid depends on the pKa, that is, degree of ionization. All the drugs ionized at plasma pH are hydrophilic or polar drugs, but they, uh, they cannot penetrate the lipoidal cell membrane and tissue permeability is the rate limiting step in the distribution of drugs. Only unionized drugs which are generally lipophilic rapidly cross the blood membrane. So take a note, ionized drugs are penetrate, cannot penetrate the lipoidal cell membrane while as unionized drugs can penetrate the lipoidal cell membrane. Among the drugs that have the same O by W pH partition coefficient but are different in terms or extent of ionization and blood pH, one that ionizes to a greater extent distributes rapidly. Example, phenobarbital and salicylic acid. Phenobarbital is more ionized at blood pH and hence the distribution is rapid. Second drug is thiopental, it is non-polar lipophilic drug and it is largely ionized at plasma pH. Sorry, it is largely unionized at plasma pH, uh, but they, they readily diffuse into the blood brain barrier because the blood brain barrier is a uh, highly lipophilic in nature, so it gives or permits entry for lipophilic drugs. Whereas penicillin, which are polar, water soluble, are ionized at plasma pH but do not cross the blood brain barrier. So alteration, okay, in the blood pH effect drug in unionized form, example for a instance in acidosis where the pH of the blood is more on acidic content, acidic side at a lower pH, the degree of ionization of acidic drugs, increased intracellular drug concentration and pharmacological action favors extracellular distribution. Whereas in alkalosis, the opposite is the effect is on opposite side. Alkalosis is a condition when the pH of the blood goes on a higher side, okay, or uh, becomes more alkaline in nature. Example: sodium bicarbonate induced alkalosis in treatment of barbiturate poisoning to drive the drug out and prevent further entry into the CNS. 
and promotes urinary excretion by favored ionization. It also favors intracellular distribution. So, uh, as we uh, to summarize, whenever the pH of the blood is altered, whether it turns on acidic or more basic side, the degree of ionization also gets affected. Moving towards the physiological barriers to distribution, first we need to understand what is a physiological barrier. Okay, there are different barriers like the capillary membrane, cell membrane, and the blood brain barrier, okay, uh, cerebrospinal fluid, placenta. These are special membranes, okay, with special structural features that uh, do not allow the drug to be distributed internally. So they include simple capillary endothelial barrier, simple cell membrane barrier, blood brain barrier, blood CSF barrier which means which stands for cerebrospinal fluid barrier, blood placenta barrier and blood testis barrier. In simple capillary endothelial barrier all the drugs ionized or iron ionized with a molecular weight less than 600 daltons diffuse through the capillary endothelium and into the interstitial fluid. Only drugs bound to the blood components are restricted because of the larger molecular size of the complex. Next is the simple cell membrane barrier. So once a drug diffuses from the capillary wall into the extracellular fluid, into the cells of most cells of most tissues, it is limited by its permeability through membrane that lines such cells. So here is a pictographic representation of how the plasma membrane barrier and drug diffusion occurs across it. So polar ion Polar ionized drugs of size less than 50 daltons are mostly distributed by carrier mediated transport. Okay, and uh, lipophilic drugs of size 500 to 600 daltons diffuse through passive diffusion. Next is blood brain barrier. Capillaries in the blood are highly specialized and less permeable to water soluble drugs. The capillaries consist of cells which are joined to one another by tight intracellular junctions, which is called comprising to what is called as the blood brain barrier. So, here you can see these are the layers of the blood brain barrier. First coming to tight intracellular junction, okay, uh, then the, there is a capillary endothelium, pericytes and astrocytes. These three components make up the blood brain barrier. Above that is the basement membrane, above that is the glial cells and last is the extracellular fluid of the brain. So only highly lipophilic drugs, okay, they only they have the tendency to cross the blood brain barrier. Whereas polar drugs like penicillin do not cross the blood brain barrier easily unless in conditions like encephalitis or meningitis where the blood brain barrier becomes more porous. So that time it is feasible for these drugs to cross. So more, moreover the presence of special, specialized cells like pericytes and astrocytes are the elements of supporting tissues found at the base of endothelial membrane which form a solid envelope around the brain capillary. However, there are special, specific sites in the brain where the blood brain barrier does not exist, namely the trigger area and median hypothalamus aminus. So, so most of the drugs administered intranasal may diffuse directly into the CNS because of continuity between the submucosal area 
of the nodes and sub arachnoid space of the olfactory level this is virtual absence of pinocytosis in the brain so uh, the trigger areas which are there okay where the blood brain barrier does not exist over there or uh, there are chances of uh, hydrophilic drugs to penetrate so a salute to gain access to the brain we are one of the two pathways one is passive diffusion through lipoid lipoidal barrier which is restricted to small molecules whose molecular weight is less than 700 daltons and high o by w partition coefficient active transport of essential nutrients such as sugars and amino acids and those structurally similar foreign molecules can also penetrate the blood brain barrier the effective ko by w of tyr pentan a highly soluble drug is 50 times than that of phenobarbital and crosses the blood brain barrier more easily so most antibiotics which are polar such as penicillin water soluble are water soluble and ionized at plasma ph and do not cross the blood brain barrier under normal circumstances selective permeability of lipid soluble moieties to the blood brain barrier makes appropriate choice of a drug to treat cns disorder part of the therapy for example in a disease called parkinsonism there is a depletion or reduction in the dopamine levels in the brain dopamine is a neurotransmitter and it is responsible for keeping the brain active okay and also called a uh, happy neurotransmitter so one uh, so dopamine easily doesn't cross the brain brain barrier so a drug called levodopa is uh, administered to the patient okay and levodopa is a drug which easily passes the cns okay through the blood brain barrier and it is further metabolized to dopamine and hence can be used for the treatment approaches to promote blood approaches to promote crossing blood brain barrier first is use of permeation enhancers like dimethyl sulfoxide stands for dmso okay second you can use osmotic disruption okay you can cause osmotic disruption of the blood brain barrier by infusing the internal carotid artery with mannitol and third is use of dihydropyridine redox system as drug carriers to the brain the lipid soluble dihydropyridine carriers to the polar drug to form pro drug okay that readily crosses the blood brain barrier in the brain the cns enzyme oxidizes the dihydropyridine moiety to the polar pyridium ion form that cannot diffuse back out of the brain as a result the drug gets trapped in the cns and such a redox system can be used to deliver steroidal drugs to the brain then we come to blood cerebro spinal fluid barrier okay the blood cerebro spinal fluid barrier is formed mainly by the choroid plexus of the third lateral third and fourth ventricle and is similar in composition to the extracellular fluid of the brain so the capillary endothelium that lines the choroid plexus have open junctions or gaps and the drug can freely flow into the extracellular space in between the capillary walls and the choroidal cells however the choroidal cells are joined to each other by tight junctions forming the blood cerebro spinal barrier which has permeability characteristics similar to that of blood brain barrier has in the case of blood brain barrier only lipid soluble drugs can cross the blood brain barrier similar with blood cerebro csf barrier with relative is where moderately lipid soluble and partially ionized drugs permeate so slowly 
or drug that enters the cerebro spinal fluid slowly cannot achieve a high concentration as the bulk flow of the csf continuously removes the drug for any given drug its concentration in the brain will always be higher than in the cerebro spinal fluid although the mechanism for diffusion of drugs into cns and cerebro spinal fluid are similar the degree of uptake may vary significantly in some cases csf drugs concentration may be higher than in the cerebral concentration example sulfur methoxazole and trimethoprim the next is blood placenta barrier the maternal and fetal blood vessels are separated by a number of tissue layers made up of fetal thromboblast membrane and endothelium which together constitute the blood placenta barrier the human placenta barrier has a mean thickness of 25 microns in early pregnancy and 2 microns in full term pregnancy drugs whose molecular weight is less than 1000 deltons and moderate to high sorry a moderate to high lipid solubility example ethanol sulfonamides barbiturates gaseous anesthetics or uh, sorry general anesthetics steroids narcotic analgesics anticonvulsants and antibiotics these drugs cross by simple diffusion rapidly nutrients essential for fetal carrier mediated transport i repeat nutrients that are essential for fetal are transported by carrier mediated transport while immunoglobins are transported by the process of endocytosis now the term tetrogen is an agent that causes side effects on fetus while tetrogenicity as defined has fetal abnormalities caused by administration of drugs during pregnancy the last is blood testis barrier this barrier is located in the sertoli sertoli junctions cell junction okay in the testis okay ties junctions between the neighboring sertoli cells act as the blood testis barrier which restricts the passage of drugs to spermatocytes and spermatids